Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. So today I have another Watch Me Work video. We're just little princesses today, aren't we? No, we're not. <laughs> this is my letter to summer. It is hot here in Texas. It won't leave even though it's technically fall. <sighs> but at least we got a good video today. It's a video, there are some missed opportunities and I'll tell you guys how I feel like they could be rectified if you try to do this look. I did get this idea from Mona Nailed It on Instagram, so I'll leave her information below so you can check out her page. So let's get into the video, guys. So first, we're going to start off by taking off her previous design. She had this pop art look, and if you haven't seen that video, definitely go look at it. These are nails after about four weeks, I believe, maybe five. And if you seen her old english nails those were for her birthday i actually did those after i did this set but i chose to post it out of chronological order so if you're wondering what's going on that's what's going on and i am using the poochie's nails coarse bit just to remove the gel polish i don't want to file these nails all the way down and i feel like something like the red baron bit would be too aggressive she does have builder gel or hard gel and it's really soft to file into and with a really aggressive file, if your intent is not to take down the bulk of the nail, it may be too aggressive. I just want to get the polish off of here. So after we're done filing down our design, we're going to go in with our cuticle work. So as you guys have probably seen a million times, and if you haven't, go back and watch my videos. I'm using this skiver bit from Atwood Industries. This is removing the dead skin from the nail plate, and that dead skin is called the cuticle. If we leave that on, we're not going to get good adhesion with our enhancement and it will cause lifting. And after we remove the cuticle from the nail plate, we will go in and remove any of that excess dead skin with our round bit from Atwood Industries. And I did not put that clip in here, and I'm sorry, but I have so many videos with showing that technique and some even more in depth. Please check out the one where I just do the cuticle nail prep. That'd be a good video if you're interested more in that. So I cleanse the nails with acetone and I'm going in with my clear rubber base and cosmetic pink from Light Elegance. This is a builder gel. And we're gonna go in and fill the nails. She already had cosmetic pink down, so this is a really easy fill. I'm just going to go in with the product and kind of polish it on. You can see it's just like a polishing motion. Get it as close to the cuticle area as possible and that's our slip layer, that's going to show the gel like, hey, this is where you belong, this is where you go, this is where you kind of level out at. Now, this, by Light Elegance's terms, the cosmetic pink gel is not self-leveling, but I believe the word is thick tropic, and I may be wrong, but I believe that's when you kind of manipulate it, it becomes looser or kind of more liquidy, the viscosity becomes thinner. So you can see I'm manipulating it a lot and it becomes a little more liquidous instead of thick and kind of stays there. So it does kind of self-level a little more once it's in that state. Now this is sped up so it does look like I'm doing a whole bunch real fast. But with Builder Gel, you don't want to go too crazy because you're going to cause yourself air bubbles. And we don't want that, especially because we're leaving this design plain. So that's what I did for the fill, real easy. And like I said, there's several videos of me going more in depth. I really want to get to the lettering in this video. So I'm going in with my cross cut bit, again from Atwood Industries, and filing out the nail. Now these nails have already been shaped. I didn't add the clip to the video. And as you guys know and may hate, I, I generally don't put in the video. But I did shape the nails already. And so I'm going in with the cross cut bit. The cross cut bit is similar to a sanding band. And as I said, gel is very soft and easy to file. You don't need a carbide bit that has teeth and flutes that will cut into this product and debulk it real quick. We're just trying to smooth out the surface. So something like a sanding band or a cross cut bit is really perfect because it can get through the inconsistencies quickly. And there's not really many with gel because most of the time it's self levels. So it's usually really good. And this is also taken away from our buffing step because it leaves such a textured surface so it's a two-in-one so i'm just going in with the velvet matte top coat over these finished filed nails 
and this is going to give us a texture so that we can write our design out before we go in with our gels and have a more permanent fixed design so it gives the nails kind of like a chalkboard texture if you will and we're going to, going to be using charcoal on the nails today and again if you've seen the old english video you've seen that i did use a darker charcoal to write you can also use a graphite pencil even a softer graphite today we're going with white charcoal because the design is real white i didn't real white and light and bright i didn't want to use something dark and black so the white charcoal works perfectly and in the other one since we were doing black it didn't it made sense to use the darker charcoal in the old english video so I'm just going in and drawing these by hand. I'm sorry that the video is not in focus at some point. It was kind of hard to capture, but I'm just going in. She said she didn't have a specific way she wanted it written. She just wanted it to look like handwriting and in cursive, just like a simplistic cursive. So I'm going in and I'm lining up her fingers and where the letter of the previous, where the end of the previous letter ends <laughs> is where I'm beginning the next letter. I'm sorry, I hope that makes sense. So it looks like it was literally written across the nails as they naturally sit. So you can see how that, how they kind of line up together. And I go in and kind of fix them and manipulate them to get them more perfect. And I'm doing that with the other hand. So I'm making sure the pointer from the left hand and the right hand line up with the previous letter. And I'm sorry, you guys, if I sound winded, my allergies are really affecting me poorly. <laughs> So I apologize about that today, guys. So I'm just going in. You see where that C kind of ended? I'm going in and drawing that H. And then I'll be taking where the H ends and then the next finger lining it up. And that's where the heart is going to go. This heart gave me problems. I'm not the biggest fan of it. I'm not a person who can draw hearts well. <laughs> I'll just... I should have used a stamp or so I used I should have used anything except my own intuition on making this heart. But it worked out. The client was happy, so I'm happy. But this is the background. This is the the things that I see and notice and wish I could change. So I'm making sure they were all lined up. Now we're gonna go in with the actual neon effect technique. So what we're looking to achieve with this look is the outline or the outer edge of the letter. To be more transparent so we're mixing the color with clear to get a more transparent jelly like color and you want that to be the outer portion of the letter and then as we go in towards the center portion of the letter you want it to become more opaque so we mixed the color whatever color we chose with clear to be translucent and we're going to go ahead and cure that after we write it and then we're going to take just the color just as it comes, the opacity that it is. And then go in a little bit smaller than our than we previously wrote the letter and trace the letter. And then we're gonna go ahead and cure. We're curing in between each time we go over the letter and trace it. This is fairly easy, but it is tedious because of the layers and the technique that you, the fact that you have to go over it so many times. So next we're gonna mix that color with white. This is getting even more opaque and brighter so that's what we're looking to do so this is going to give us our brightest point and then you can kind of kind of play with it and see how much white you think it should have i kind of think i should have played with it a little more and maybe even mixed a little white and when i just did the plain color maybe just the tiniest bit of white but you know you live and you learn so next i'm going back with that first jelly color we made, the one mixed with clear, and kind of making the outside edge even more kind of blown out. So what I would have done differently is kind of exaggerated or blow out that color, that translucent color even more, kind of make it, you know, the letter even bolder with translucent color and then the more opaque and still leave the brightest one with white kind of that thin, but maybe add a little more white just play with this kind of you kind of see what the technique is we're going from jelly color to opaque color mixed with white and bright and i didn't add i'm using the wildflowers um i'm either using the blue striper brush or the gold one or yellow one i'm not sure what they call it uh either i think i'm using actually the gold one yeah there you go you see it so that's the brush i'm using today 
I love my wildflowers brushes. I've been having them for years. I probably need to buy some new ones at, at this time. But you can really see with this eye how thin I had it, the technique, down real thin. And from a distance, you can't really tell. You have to be really up on this to appreciate the neon light effect. So, like, yeah, I wish I would have made the, the letters wider, bulkier, and bigger so you could tell from a distance kind of what it was even more so. So at this point, it's just redundant. It's just the same thing over and over again. The translucent, the solid color, which is more opaque, the color mixed with white, and then I'm going back in with the translucent color and kind of blowing out the edges. And that's the technique. So I'll give you guys a little music. You can just watch me work. Okay, so after we have everything drawn on, we're going to go ahead and top coat. She wanted to leave these shiny today as opposed to matte. And I think it was a good call since it's supposed to be like light, sh bright, shining, shiny. I don't know, just word association with why that needs to be shiny. <laughs> so I'm using the Opera Gel Top Coat. It's a, it's a decent top coat. I'm not mad at it. I've had it a few times. Like I said before, I'm not tied to a specific gel top coat i tried different ones and a lot of them are good for me i do have to add joya mia's top coat i enjoy especially well but anyways so i'm using the stay put jelly it's a crystal gel by daily charm this is their thicker of the two crystal gels they offer and you can see how i'm just push them crystals i put a good amount of the crystal gel and i push them into the edge the edges are embedded into that gel not the top of it and there's not just barely any there is a good amount of gel on there and the edges are just completely covered. Now, before I cure that, I do want to blend out the edge so there's no line of demarcation. So you can see that there's a blob of gel there and it was cured like that. No, go ahead and take some type of brush and just feather out the edges of that gel. Now, you don't want to feather completely like where it's just nothing and flat because that de defeats the whole purpose of trying to build up that little rim or kind of prong setting with my air quotes prong setting of gel glue of crystal gel or whatever you want to call it so after i cured that i'm going to go ahead and with my opera gel top coat i'm going to top coat around the stones between them and never ever ever on top never on top and that is our final look I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Please leave a thumbs up, comment down below. Let me know some ideas of what you guys want to see. And follow me on Instagram if you have not already. And I do want to add, for the time being, I am doing Skype and FaceTime classes. Um, these are for the people who enjoy and can learn easily from the YouTube videos, but you want to ask me what you want answered. 
not hope I'm answering. You can just specifically, me and you, one-on-one, ask me what you want to ask me. I'll show you anything I can show you. I'll tell you all the information I can tell you. If you want to know which phone I use to record, which app I use to edit photos, what's the booking site I have, show me how to do a marble nail. If you can learn that way just visually and you just want to ask questions to me, this would be a perfect setting for you. The minimum I do is one hour for $100. There's deals for more hours. If you're interested, email me at topofthescott.nails at gmail.com. Don't know how long I'm doing them, but I'm doing them now. But anyways, I appreciate you guys' time. And uh, just always, I love you guys. Your support really means a lot to me. All right, you guys. Bye.